Hello everyone. Today I welcome you to my show Science Thursdays. In this show we're going to take a look into the fascinating and the greatest discovery of humankind, science. So today is episode number 1. So in today's episode we're going to take a look into what science is. So let's dive into it. So question comes what science is and why i call it a discovery rather than an invention now science at its fundamental level is how nature works now at the simplest level it might look like you know a plane is flying because man made it no what man did is figured out the science of it science of fluid science of aerodynamics and then engineers made a tool that utilizes those principles or laws or sometimes we call it theory nowadays and we ended up with flight so science is not man made that is the most crucial aspect about science science is not man made it it's the only thing we humans ever created or discovered that has nothing to do with your nationality it does not has to do anything with your skin color it simply does not care whether you are man woman asian christian it does not care science is completely completely independent of all these things now so what science is in basic terms is laws that govern our world now what do you mean by laws that govern our world? like the traffic laws no hell no now these are the laws that are at the fundamental level of reality itself as in if you take something and you drop it it falls what is causing that action so you need to discover this you cannot make gravity newton did not make gravity he discovered it he discovered it and theorized it how it works and then he created a mathematics for it that was good enough then einstein comes along and then he refines that mathematics newton got the idea that there is gravity einstein come along why there is gravity now to the current extent uh, we haven't gone down much closer than that like that is the core level right now we are so in basic sense mass creates space time bend which we perceive as gravity that is all we know about gravity as of as of this recording so if it changes future that would be awesome so so now we know science is not man made science is man discovered okay cool now then question becomes how do you discover such a thing now uh, you most most of us are familiar with the these terms like uh, scientific method or you know uh, rigorous testing and things of this nature so what does these thing do well think of it this way you observe something so you're like okay you so observe the waves and you are like okay i see waves now what now you catalog that data you do your best to observe that information as regularly as you can you note it down and in the famous word of adam savage the only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down and i'm not joking this is what science is just jotting down every single bit of information that we have you can do that with computer so you don't need a pen and paper every time so all things can say you jot down information collect as much information as you can with as many variables as you can like what was the weather what was the current what was the uh, how many ships were in the sea so just to observe the waves you will collect as much data as you can now you will create a hypothesis and on based on that hypothesis you will speculate what should happen and then you will go back to that place where you did the observation and data measurement and you will check it whether your uh, predicted mathematics came close to what happened like it will never come to 100% absolute accuracy but it will come pretty damn close if your hypothesis is even close to real or accurate description of nature now you got the hypothesis you do your math you repeat this experiment if it comes out your hypothesis is not giving the predictability of uh, like you know you cannot predict something that means your mathematics is not correct enough or it cannot have that uh, like you know time prediction of that hypothesis that you are creating is not very long like uh, rotation of earth can be predicted to hundreds of years from now like we know every detail about this and we can calculate it to very far extent so 
let's say you created it, the waves and you thought waves are caused by ships and all that and because you are noticing a lot of ships coming on you know high tides but there are ships on low tides also and your hypothesis was wrong so why would that be then you will start observing again but this time you might notice hey moon uh, moon might have something to do with it because that's a celestial body it has a big gravitational pull who knows then you will start collaborating that data that you collected about the oceans and tides and then you will collaborate the data with moon and then you will have a hypothesis if this hypothesis guarantees the outcome with certain level of uh, I would say nuance and uh, this is a very crucial part about uh, science that most people don't gravitate towards is that you cannot just say this will happen you have to say when how as many things as you can say about it you cannot be like okay there will be a shooting star no you have to say there will be a shooting star that will come from this constellation we're gonna look at it this time and this will be the more or less the color of it or you know the trail would be this long then you are doing science if you are giving a vague description like you know uh, prophecy and shit of that nature it does not matter you give a vague description of everything it can be made to sync with anything so some people can uh, link up the fact that somebody wrote that you know two mountains will burn and fall is to water its center so things of this nature happen so you have to understand this science is absolute you have to give as much accuracy to your prediction as you can like of course there is no 100 percent accuracy it's just but you have to be in like you know 90 95 percent accuracy you cannot be like okay i predict there will be a earthquake no you have to say earthquake will happen at least in this week or at least if you are predicting long enough at least in that month so you cannot be like okay i think there will be an earthquake no you have to be like there will be an earthquake sooner or later there will be so you have to be precise now this all comes down to the fact that science requires very serious amount of dedication and very large amount of patience now when you have patience you have to note down everything it could take years before you can even realize there is a pattern in that data so science is not man-made it requires patience it requires large amount of data gathering then you create a hypothesis after you created the hypothesis you predict something once that prediction comes true to within a certain level of accuracy like let's say 90 95 percent then you share this finding with the world then the whole world now in earlier days we didn't need to do that because what they were discovering was quite fundamental it was quite easy to verify however nowadays everything we are discovering is so complex specifically regarding quantum physics and uh, time and space and yes there is a method that hopefully theoretically could also allow faster than light travel so suffice to say we need to get uh, this what we call peer reviewed basically you get to other people who want to discredit you you give the, your data to them and like this is why i'm making this and prove me wrong and since it's mathematic there is no politics in this it's either works or doesn't work so this absolute aspect of science is what makes it very unique you can you would uh, you would not care whether uh, a german created e equal to mc square you, it simply has no bearing on it and you can translate it to as many languages as you can and it will not get corrupted like unlike a religious text the reason for that is let's say you some in some language they changed e equal to mc square to e equal to mc cube in their language yes the, the mathematics wouldn't work and people will be like okay either this is wrong or some error is there in the mathematics so they will redo the maths and okay so it must be wrong in the in terms of e equal to mc cube cube cannot be the correct answer so as you see science is self-correcting because it's not man-made man never had anything to do with it we just figured out a mathematics for it we're like okay gravity has 9.8 meter per second acceleration it could be a bit different here and there like on top of a mountain it will be very 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 slightly slower at sea level it will be fast and bottom of a sheet if you can create a vacuum chamber there it will be a bit faster so as you can see science is quite unique it's uh, not man-made and it's the greatest achievement we ever had like to say that science brings us closer to gods would not be a wrong statement we now live so long like we are expected to live as high as 80 85 years or even 110 years and we think that's normal well for our biology to work for that long it needs way too many assistance like it needs vaccines 
and you, you might say, okay, I haven't taken vaccine, but here's the deal. If let's say enough of the world has been eradicated with polio, let's say in case of polio vaccines has been deprecated enough there, polio is permanently removed. You don't need vaccine, either. you will just take it for safety measures and you are not killed at the childhood stage. There are things like that, thousands of things like that, vaccines, better medical procedures, better detectors like x-rays, specifically x-rays, imagine uh, not knowing which bones is broken, like how to cast the mold. It's not that people before that didn't knew that, it's just they didn't have a precise understanding. Sometimes they will, you know, tie up a broken bone, but it did not heal because the bones have been fragmented in smaller chunks or things of that nature, like seeing it fixes everything, like you know what happened. So there are a lot of science that we goes into, heck, like, let's uh, look at an example of simple things that many of you are familiar with glasses like imagine your life without glasses like uh, you can still navigate you can still walk around and get things done but you are basically on standard definition heck and if your uh, eyesight is really bad you are functionally blind you can't see far enough you can't drive cars properly or safely so we need a lot of science just to stay alive so Saying that science is not the most important thing in the world would be flat out wrong. Like you can live without almost anything, but you can't live without science. I mean, like you cannot live prosperously and hopefully and safe, secure. And we would be remiss if we forgot to mention the communication aspect of science. Science allows us to communicate at light speed. Understand that thing that we nowadays have the technology to pick up a phone and call someone thousands of kilometers away literally on other country literally on other continent heck you can even do that to the moon but there would be 1.8 seconds of lag roughly so we are communicating at light speed we are slowly becoming gods we fly we fly understand this aspect that nowadays flying is so easy like you get a job you want to go home your home is far take a flight you are in a steel uh, generally it's aluminum nowadays, aluminum and carbon fiber. You are in a carbon fiber tube which goes at 40,000 feet or 30,000 feet depending on your airline and you are traveling at roughly 700 kilometers per hour and we get bored on that. Like we are flying faster than any bird has ever flown, higher than any bird has ever achieved and we like, we, uh, I'm, like uh, I'm like, we don't care, I'm like, we got better things to worry about. So saying the science is making us more like gods is not wrong the only reason we don't feel like it is we have no contrast it like everybody is pulled up like uh, it creates an equal society where everybody starts to you know rise up like nowadays i'm seeing uh, farmers uh, rickshawala and all those things having 4g smartphone a 4g smartphone in country like india where everybody has data connection on that it's not just that there is a phone there is a freaking data connection on that so Suffice to say, science equalizes us all. So all things considered, we should be very thankful that some people got together and created a scientific method for us to use. Then a lot of people put their life, whole life, uh, dedicating to figuring out the world that we see around us. And uh, there are some few mentions. So suffice to say science is magical because it's not man-made it cannot be corrupted by man it's like uses of it can be nasty let's just say that but science itself simply does not care so that was my episode episode number one so let's call it a day today and uh, i'll see you in episode two where we'll discuss and uh, as always, I hope you like this presentation. I hope you will return. And uh, if you are free, you can subscribe. So because I upload a video every weekday. And uh, I hope to see, you, uh, see your comments, like and dislikes, everything. And as always, thanks for watching.